If Beijing thought these protesters were quietly going away, they're not. Noisy but scrupulously polite. It's hard to know where the protesters stop and the volunteers begin. But don't mistake affability for insouciance. There is anger here. They call this an awakening for Hong Kong. It's a protest brought out by students, school kids even, without great organisation, but one of their own free will. And it's a protest that's come about for one very simple reason, that a promise made to them in the basic law by Beijing has been broken. And as China watches these scenes, captured by drone no less, it may be regretting its pledge of universal suffrage to Hong Kong. Last month, it changed the rules, insisting the National People's Party would vet every candidate that stood for Hong Kong's top job. That was when the city saw red. The government is very nervous now. Any government would be, if you have so many people on the streets. So we say to Beijing, we say to the Hong Kong government, listen. Listen to the people, make a positive response. The ball is now in Beijing's court. They played a heavy hand earlier, greeting peaceful protest with tear gas. This Red Cross tent was set up in anticipation of more trouble. We found Keith there, who's 16, and defied his parents to come down. The Hong Kong government is really not uh, giving us uh, the freedom that we have, and they threaten our freedom. It seems that a Rubicon has been crossed. There are people now who say they don't trust their own government. They're not talking about China, they're talking about Hong Kong. And that's crucial for one very specific reason. Whilst this protest may be hashtagged Occupy Central, make no mistake. This one is not an organized protest movement of the Tiananmen generation. It's powered by their kids, some of them still in school uniform. What is Hong Kong like for young people, for students right now? Uh, we, feel, we, feel, uh, we feel angry uh, of the government, uh, uh, how they use the violence against us and how they, uh, how they just ignore our, our feelings and don't, do not come out and talk to us. The skyscrapers that ring these protests are a constant reminder we're in one of the most affluent cities in the world. It's no coincidence, says Hong Kong's father of democracy, Professor Joseph Chan. People also understand that they need a democratic political system instead of just maintaining the status quo because they see a widening of the gap between the rich and poor. They see increasing collusion between big business groups and the government and they see deteriorating corruption. So they understand that democracy may not be a panacea but democracy is essential to the solution. But it's not everyone's solution. Yes, there may be thousands on the street, but there are plenty more still at home in this seven million strong city. They don't all agree that Hong Kong needs change. Some think it will damage the city irreparably that has offered so many Chinese undreamt of opportunities. But try telling that to the crowds huddled here tonight. The umbrella has become a symbol originally to fight off pepper spray, then to fight off rain. It speaks of a quiet determination and a patience to sit things out, come what may.